my great pleasure to welcome each one of you to be here for the 2019 St. George Prize Award Ceremony. The National Foundation for Cancer Research established the St. George Prize for Progress in Cancer Research in 2006, named after NFCR's co-founder and Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Albert St. George. So you mentioned there are sort of three areas of immunotherapy. There's cytokines, and Steve kind of invented that with IL-2. There's checkpoint inhibitors, and Steve was crucial to that with his work on early work on the CTLA-4 antibodies. And then there was used the idea that you could use cells as living drugs, and that led to TILs and CAR T cells and engineered T cells and all this great stuff that we have now. And, and that's really, uh, you know, probably what Steve is most famous for of those three. But all of them are, are, are seminal achievements. What I'd like you to do is just look around a little bit and be totally impressed by the brain power in cancer research that's assembled here tonight. It's really impressive. So, you know, I'd like to thank everybody who came here. It's really impressive to have everybody here. As John and Ned have said, Steve has been a visionary really from the beginning. To bring it down to something that Albert St. Georgie said a long time ago, research is really about seeing what everyone else has seen, but thinking what no one else has seen. And what, St what exemplifies Steve is the belief from looking around that immunotherapy had an enormous future. Gave the patient an appointment for three months, never thinking he would, uh, he would come back. But he did come back three months later, and as I flipped the pages, he came back six months later, he came back 12 months later, and here he was, 12 years later, looking perfectly healthy. It was the same patient. We checked the records, we checked the... <laughs> Somehow, he had undergone one of the rarest events in all of medicine, and that is the spontaneous regression of his cancer in the absence of any treatment. Somehow, his body had learned how to destroy this cancer. There was something about his physiology that enabled him to do that, and of course, it's the immune system that is the most powerful protection we have against outside invaders. And somehow, the body had seen his cancer in outside, as an outside invader, had eliminated it, and here he was completely normal. One of the first operations I did as a junior resident, took out his gallbladder and examined his liver, went through his belly. There was no sign of any, uh, of any cancer left. And I'd been interested in immunology, but that led me to believe that there was some wisdom in the body that enabled it to destroy this cancer. It appeared that the immune system was the likeliest suspect, and that then led me to uh, almost a lifetime of studying the immune response to, uh, to human cancer. When I stumbled across the clinical trial out at NIH for uh, Dr. Rosenberg's treatment, and I read it, and I took it to my husband, I said, this is what I want to do. Um, we took it to our oncologist there and told him, and I remember him saying, you know, we typically work with a group out of Denver, and I said, I don't care, this is what I want to do, because um, you know, it had the initial chemo to wipe out your immune system, but after that it was my immune system doing the work, and that was something that I could really wrap my head around. And I remember going out to NIH and having the fellow explain it to my husband and I. I want to thank him for funding scientists and laboratories worldwide to study cancer at its most funda fundamental level, for funding basic research, translational research, and clinical research, for projects that include improving cancer prevention strategies, developing early detection tools, and advancing targeted cancer therapies. Thank you for fostering collaboration amongst scientists around the world and across disciplines to providing seed funding and flexibility to, for innovative ideas and research. In 2015, when the opportunity arose for me to intern with the National Foundation for Cancer Research to explain their Play for the Cure platform to minor league baseball, I felt extremely grateful. Since then, I've gotten to work with so many people, both at NFCR and in minor league baseball, and I'm so proud of the impact we have been able to make. Recently, we conducted fundraising events for National Foundation for Cancer Research. The student artists from our organization organized a silent auction event 
that feature their painting, photography, and other additional items, including membership, gift cards that we all the student volunteers have collected from various companies. Susan began supporting NFCR several years before her diagnosis. And being a stickler for detail, she immediately began planning her legacy. She hired an attorney and she crafted a living trust. She planned for her final arrangements and she organized her affairs. She provided financial gifts for her family, some friends and her church, and she made provisions to care for her beloved horse. After all other distributions, Susan bequeathed the residual of her estate to the National Foundation for Cancer Research. I'm delighted to present a new gift of 75,000 to NFCR for the Susan Irene Parker Memorial Fund for Metastatic Cancer Research.